Phyrexia poses a threat to the entire multiverse. A threat I will end. Hi guys, welcome to the video. Welcome to this cool deck. How was your day? Mine was quite fine. Anyways, this is a sick artifact mid-range deck that cheats both on mana and cards in the mid to late game. I'm shortly going over each card here, but uh, I always explain a lot, so yeah. Skrull, real good card, protects your dream mana value engines, of course. It's an artifact, one drop, perfect. The Research Desk, great card selection tool uh, that can prevent us both from screw or flood. Same as the Crystal Grotto, by the way. Don't be scared of also running the to lose with that. Just play another three drop first. And uh, you can unearth the desk, by the way, with Relic or Grotto later on. The chip, uh, I waited a long time for finding a good deck for it in standard. It has an insane card advantage ability attached to it, especially if you have so many ways of getting rid of extra lands on top of your library. Just watch the games, it's kind of crazy often. Um, yeah, also blocks creatures real well and does not get removed by Brotherhood's end on the damage side. Uh, same as the Unctus, the Urza, the Sentry, and uh, something like the Adeline in the sideboard. Um, by the way, you always want to tap itself for mana if you have a relic in play before equipping it. Um, it needs to be a creature for that to work. And yeah, small decisions like that can be totally game losing or winning sometimes. That's just really how it often works with this deck. And yeah, the Tameshi here, by the way, has it in his hands, which is kind of cute. Then a uh, Counterspell, pretty good card in standard. Uh, can, by the way, hold it and then cast it from the top of your library if you have an active uh, chip. And also can, even if you have no untapped artifact in play, which you have most of the time, play it for only two mana um, if you have an Urza in play, since the one extra is part of its mana cost. Then Sten, probably the best two mana creature in the deck, uh, makes the artifacts cheaper, it's a legend. It's blue for Unctus, perfect. I ran originally three of him in the first version, same as the Urza, but I ended up being so annoyed by hitting uh, extra copies of Chaos Reconstruction, and uh, plus both have strong competition, so yeah. By the way, you can also name Sorcery with uh, Sten if you want to ramp out a Chaos or to play around something like Make Disappear. I had a game where I held up uh, four extra mana with a uh, higher ranked soldiers player and cast two re reconstructions over two turns uh, the first for two then then the second for three so yeah that's pretty good then banky b is banky b uh, annex one of at least i'd say you want to have some sort of removal effect or in this case slowing down effect for a uh, for example for uh, kiki chiki since they just get it back by removing it most likely and of course four in best of one and uh, also the kundai main deck uh, in best of one um, Tameshi then is kind of a crazy late game bomb, reanimates your artifacts, draws cards. You don't want to play it on turn 3 though, if possible. So one off for now, but obviously still really good. By the way, if you would bounce your Uza Planeswalker on the opponent's turn, you would still draw with Tameshi and you would then get back the, uh, Uza, the Urza and the Mightstone. Just as a little note, then Anctus is kind of a combo piece uh, since most of your creatures are blue, otherwise you can make them blue uh, for even zero uh, mana. And they're legends, so Relic of Legends uh, lets you then trigger Anctus draw ability each time you tap a creature for mana, which is just so good in the mid uh, to late game to filter thr uh, through your deck, putting lands away and finding just the right cards for the situation. And also he buffs your team, um, yes your team, he can make creatures also into artifacts and has another cool synergy with Toulouse. Um, since uh, each discarded card goes then under her and uh, you can get back the cards if not by chump blocking of her. If the opponent does uh, not uh, attack the better, right? Because um, then you get more time and the deck is just gonna get out of control if you get too much time anyways. Uh, if not by that, by just playing a second copy of it if you have it, or maybe a, a Gancho or a Mightstone on it. So if Mightstone draws two cards, which is already good, then it draws like five or six. I think that's a pretty uh, okay deal, something to keep in mind with, uh, with that. And also it's just a good card on her own and helps for diversifying versus uh, good cards versus this deck like Brotherhood's End. Uh, the same counts uh, therefore for the other two heroes. They are no artifacts, but they have great synergy with artifacts. 
Mulcator, a great token engine, uh, needs, by the way, when he enters only two more artifacts to trigger um, its ability on the end step, um, because he also generates one artifact by creating the golem. Then Urza makes artifacts cheaper, makes Chaos Reconstruction cheaper, and the counter spell, um, which is a decent curve to cast, essentially, the Kalos as a collected company uh, as soon as turn 4 if you play a Urza on turn 3. Same with the Relic or Sten. And uh, it has just this insane over-the-top ability attached to it by being able to transform, sorry, melt into Urza Planeswalker, which, is, which often just ends the game on the spot by concession and is what you dig often for uh, in the late game. Um, Especially versus like Farewell decks if you have no counter spell at the moment or have already used it. And uh, yeah, we have just one Might Stone in there, but watch the games and see how often we still melt because of all the card selection. The main reason for one is because it is it is good on its own, but because of Kalos Reconstruction, you want to have as many twos and threes and ones as creatures and uh, artifacts as possible. And we already have like two counters main. We want to bring at least one more after sideboard. So we want to we want to keep we want to keep uh, the creature and artifact count as high as possible when it comes to CMC three or less. Kalos, good card, especially if you also let's say can find removal uh, spells for uh, matchups like uh, like aggro. I made a short uh, about this. If you check it out on my channel, it uh, it has potential to be not fair. Let's say like this. And yeah, sideboard maybe real quick. Uh, there is a, a kunai. Leave leave the kunai alone, okay? He he's good. This sort of there's just no portable hole, hole or glass casket uh, glass casket unfortunate unfortunately. But he is an artifact which you can hit off Kalos reconstruction. Um, or is like relevant for the for the Melkator. Often costs zero mana because either you play it as your turn one play and that kind of kind of is zero mana. Or if you have a Sten or Urza in play. And you can then also spread the two additional mana to equip and to use as you like. And you can still block with the equipped creature and then tap it for the sneaky weapon. It, it ain't great, I know. But we ain't get glass casket or portable hole. Gotta try alchemy for that, guys. For the hole, anyways. Then uh, the Lauren, Adeline, Talias, and one protocol against Brotherhood end stacks. Uh, board out some artifacts to, divers to diversify even more against that card because obviously it's still really good. Just try to um, minimize it to a two for one. I think that's a decent approach by still playing the deck, right? It's an artifact deck, so what, what you're gonna do? Because you still wanna play good cyber cards and don't fill your entire deck with non-artifact stuff and then play a different deck, but I think it, it works out pretty decent off, not always, sometimes they get lucky with with Brotherhood's end, of course, but that's that's magic. Um, then two counters for Big White and uh, Atraxa. Anything else? You can technically play one more uh, Otavara, cut one uh, Mulcator or a Toulouse. She's good with that, of course, though. The Toulouse because of the channel ability that counts as a discard for her. Uh, I'm, I'm hating that, but it might just be better to play an extra land, of course, and the, the channel lands are, are really good in the deck. But it, it's so hard because you want to make your Chaos Reconstructions as good as possible and, st and still want to play the Mindstone, still want to play the counter spells. so yeah. I'm not too sure about that yet. And uh, yeah, in the, in the first games, I, by the way, don't have to lose in there. She just kind of got there later. Because as I said, I was a little annoyed by heading extra stands or Ursus uh, off the constructions. Uh, so I searched for other good blue legends. Also got like a Mirix uh, in there as a land. But that's not that good in this, uh, in this deck, I don't think. And yeah, by the way, uh, if you want to play chess guy, let's go over here real quick. You can run then uh, Aerith um, as another great uh, anti-Brotherhood Ends card. Uh, and you play on her instead of Toulouse, of course, because she also has a combo with Unctus. She lets you essentially draw two cards each time you tap a blue creature, in case you have a Relic and an Unctus in play, which is kind of nuts, right? You, of course, then don't want to do this on the opponent's turn if you have cards uh, in hand. Otherwise, you have to still discard to, to Unctus. Uh, and it's a little weird with sometimes your best card in some matchups, the counter spell. It's not in there because of this, but in the sideboard. But yeah, that's another cool way to play the deck. Uh, in best of three, I think, in best of one, it's a little weird because of the, of the pain lands. And yeah, you also get actual Kayla or the reactor. Pretty cool, but in this video, we focus on blue white. But yeah, let's go back real quick. 
yeah, the deck's pretty complicated often. If you want your decisions to matter and like solving puzzles uh, quickly though, because the clock is often actually your biggest enemy, at least it was uh, for me, unless you're like super smart or are very, very used to the deck, then uh, yeah, come along with me and let's think through some of our plays here together on the mythic ladder with this beautiful brew, shall we? Let's go. Designs are in need of testing. You do. A necessary cost. I am the master of this domain.
have made it just in time. Show them the edge of your blade! the energy of battle, then guide it like water. to wandering.
surrender now, and we all leave with our lives. I'll finish this here and now. As I command. A necessary cost. What secrets have we unearthed?
I bring order to this broken world. My ways are not for the weak. This doesn't concern you. A necessary cost.
Go on. Prove you're worth my time. I have no use for you. I am the master of this domain. 